Hello everyone and welcome to St Mark's Online. This video uploaded for Sunday the 2nd of August AD 2020. Welcome whoever you are and wherever you are. Thank you for joining me. Going to start with the words of a hymn. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to lie in pastures green. He leadeth me to quiet waters by. My soul he doth restore again, and me to walk doth make. Within the paths of righteousness, in for his own name's sake. Yea, though I walk through death's dark veil, yet will I fear none ill. For thou art with me, and thy rod and staff me comfort still. My table thou hast furnished in presence of my foes, my head thou dost with oil anoint, my cup overflows. Goodness and mercy all my life shall surely follow me, and in God's house for evermore my dwelling place shall be. Will those who have that vision of contentment in this life and hope for the next, now join together in the words of the Confession. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have broken your holy laws. We have left undone what we ought to have done, and we have done what we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy on us. Spare those who confess their faults. Restore those who repent as you have promised through Jesus Christ our Lord. And grant, O merciful Father, for his sake, that we may live a godly, righteous and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Collect for the Eighth Sunday after Trinity. Almighty God, whose never-failing providence governs everything in heaven and on earth, humbly we ask you to remove all that is hurtful and to give that which is profitable for us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A great joy to read to you Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord for ever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of each of our hearts be acceptable now and always in thy sight, O God, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. The story is told of a young man in a mountainous country who was covered by an avalanche of snow and found by rescuers frozen solid, with his right hand clutching the ring finger of his left hand. Later they discovered that the boy had attended a church meeting that evening, at which the preacher had asked everyone to give 
one word of the first line of Psalm 23, to each of the digits of their left hand. And if they believed it, the Lord is my shepherd, to grab the, the finger, the fourth finger, the fourth digit, to say the Lord, yes, is my shepherd. So the boy's last thought in this world was to believe indeed that the Lord is my shepherd. He went straight to heaven. Our culture is broken, fragmented and let down, so traders like to bind us to certain brands, such as calling something your m and I'm intrigued by the use of that pronoun. Christianity also uses personal pronouns. Today we embark on a five-part series of summer psalms, which train us to call God my refuge, my dwelling place, my rock, my father, yes, even in the psalms, and beginning today, my shepherd. We study Psalm 23 in two parts. First, my shepherd. If you are a townie, you may think that sheep are soft and cuddly, but those from the countryside know that they are smelly, easily led and defenceless. They are dependent on the shepherd. And the psalm expresses deep contentment in him. They are dependent on the shepherd, saying, I shall not be in want. Notice that when you read the word Lord in the English translations, the word Lord is in capital letters indicating that the Hebrew word is the covenant-keeping Lord. The shepherd makes me lie down in green pastures, giving me nourishing food. The shepherd leads me beside still waters, offering me accessible drink, so that the whole being is blessed. He restores my soul. In life we distinguish between right and wrong, I'm thinking of questions of morality, but also must discern between wisdom and folly, say a matter of timing or, or selection of resources. Uh, this can be a matter of experience. It is the first aspects that the psalm now has in mind. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Those last four words, his name's sake, giving us a fine way to end a prayer. So far, the relationship is heaven on earth. Contentment. God, the Lord, is the shepherd and the flock are safely grazing. David was a shepherd before he was a king and became the great statesman of ancient Israel. And he may have written this psalm as a youth while he kept guard over the flock. He became skilled in defence. As he told King Saul when he offered to fight the Goliath, the Philistine champion, in 1 Samuel 17, beginning at verse 34. When a lion or bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, he said, struck it and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by the hair, struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. A true shepherd, we find, is alert, skilful, and courageous. Well, it may have been such moments that came to mind, or, or perhaps the times later on when David was pursued by the paranoid and murderous King Saul. When he wrote, when David wrote, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Leaders must be able to drag the wayward animals in their care out of a ditch with their shepherd's crook, as well as beat away the predator with a rod. And the knowledge that such a shepherd is with you means that you say, I will fear no evil. You get out of bed and whatever you're facing in the morning, you rise, you wake, you say, I will fear no evil, the Lord is with me. You come to a high pressure point in your day, you're anxious, you're nervous, you say to your soul, 
I will fear no evil. The Lord is with me. You finish the day. You accomplish a task. You take a break and you declare again, I will fear no evil. The Lord is with me. Christ said, I am the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep, who brings us life to the full. Unlike the hired hand who runs away when he sees the wolf approach. That's all in John 10 from verse 10. Centuries before that, but after David wrote Psalm 23, God had said in Ezekiel 34, Woe to the shepherds of Israel who only take care of themselves. And I will place over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he will tend them. Marvellous stuff. So, the descendant of David of whom David himself had been writing in the Psalms, has come, has now come. And he is not only shepherd, but sacrificial lamb. From another perspective, priest and sacrifice. Not only prophet, but also word. Not only king, but also kingdom. In fact, he holds all the great offices of spiritual state and embodies what they are and what they bring, and does so perfectly. No wonder Jesus is everything to us. I once heard the story of a tourist bus driving through Israel. The tour guide had been explaining that the shepherds in that area gave a name to each sheep and the sheep trust the shepherd and the sheep follow the shepherd rather than being herded from the rear. One attentive holiday maker, however, staring out of the window of the of the tour bus said, look over there, that shepherd drives the sheep from the rear. The guide stopped the coach, got off, went to the man with the sheep, came back and reported his conversation, saying, it's okay, that's not the shepherd, that's the butcher. Consider with me the wonder of it all, that Jesus, who calls us by name, leads us by example, also lays down his life for the sheep. And the sheep listen to his voice. John 10 verse 3, he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. We ask, has he called you? Has he summoned you by name? Listen clearly. For if you've come as far as eagerly searching the scriptures with me, surely you will hear him soon. Second, and more briefly, it's a shorter part of Psalm 23, God is my host. Now, I know some argue that the rest of Psalm 23, the last two verses, continue the imagery of sheep and shepherd. When you say a table, they say it's a type of flat, easy eating uh, field. When you have oil, wouldn't the shepherd apply some types of oil to the head of the sheep to uh, disinfect them or keep flies off? But despite hearing that, I still think it's probably simpler to see the imagery as the sort of feast that became so prominent in the parables of Christ. Simply the banquet. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. A picture of luxury and abundance, of welcome and vindication, of hope and of safety. And so God is promising that what we taste in this life will only increase in the world to come. Surely goodness and love will follow me, concludes David, all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God is good. Jesus is the King of love. The resurrection of Christ proves the afterlife. The Father and the Son do not abandon us. And when the chief shepherd appears, 1 Peter 5 verse 4 says this, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. How encouraging is that? It's all in God's hands and that's the best place for life to be. So what does that mean for us to be able to call God my shepherd and my host? I draw out three things about shepherding and flock life today. One, convictions. The Christian says that God is my shepherd as freely as we say Jesus is my Lord. 
God provides for my needs while putting me to work. Uh, hence another creaturely image uh, used in scripture is from Jesus, uh, who uh, he speaks about the, the birds that go about their daily business without worrying. They are worry-free, Matthew 6, but still very active. And Peter describes the believer, 1 Peter 2, 25, as one who has returned to the overseer and shepherd of your souls. Our conviction is not only that we strayed, but we were brought back and we were brought back to our rightful place and put to our proper work. Convictions. Secondly, character. So not just what we believe, but who we are. Forged in the valley of the shadow of death, and following one who prayed earnestly as he prepared in Gethsemane for his sin-bearing death, our faith grows in God. Peter was reinstated to Christian ministry by Christ who said, Feed my lambs. John 21 verse 15. And Peter took a newfound humility into his work as a result, as an under-shepherd of the flock of God. Character. Tone matters so much, not to be overbearing, but just to be someone who comes alongside, urging and encouraging. Convictions, character and competence is my third application. Jesus appointed his apostles to complete the Bible so that pastors can lead us now into the rich grazing of God's word. Of the king's rule over Israel, we read, David shepherded them with integrity of heart. With skilful hands he led them. That's the end of Psalm 78. He was not perfect, but he was battle ready, sought God's timing, and lamented death of friend and foe. What is your competence? Is there an integrity of heart? Is God developing skilful hands for you? We need the convictions and the character and the competence, and all in God's grace. Let us be thankful to God, therefore, that he is our shepherd, who guides us, who never leaves us, who brings us safely to the new world. The Lord Jesus has gone through death itself to show the power and victory of God's eternal love, which the Father sets upon the Son, and on those whom he draws to the Lamb of God. Have you found your contentment in him? Have you got to the point where you say yes? The Lord is my shepherd. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for revelation that you make yourself known to us. Thank you for salvation, that the way of safety and rescue is set before us. Thank you, Lord, for the inspiration by your spirit of the scripture writers that we can feast on these good things today. In your name. Amen. This song is called Faithful Shepherd. Faithful shepherd, feed me in the pastures green. Faithful shepherd, lead me where thy steps are seen. Hold me fast and guide me in the narrow way, so with thee beside me I shall never stray. Daily bring me nearer to the heavenly shore, make my faith grow clearer, may I love thee more. Hallow every pleasure, every gift and pain, be thyself my treasure, though none else I gain. Day by day prepare me, as thou seest best, then let angels bear me to thy promised rest. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Pray today for the Church worldwide, for the faithfulness of her bishops, archbishops and all other clergy, and pastors and lay officers of your Church, Lord God, that in this business of shepherding, they would be those who have clear convictions, they would have godly character and growing competence. We pray for all who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad and all who teach and disciple others, remembering mission partners, Kevin and Jennifer, Robin and Lorna, and of course, Alison. And we ask, Lord God, that you protect those persecuted for the faith, knowing that in some areas of the world, it is extremely dangerous to say that the Lord is my shepherd. Here in the UK, bless and guide the Queen and Royal Family and all in authority, knowing that we must all give account of ourselves to you. And in particular, yet again, we pray very much that you would strengthen and protect all in public service. Locally, we pray for the peace and prosperity of our parish and community, the homes, businesses and schools. And we pray for those in particular who are in trouble, in sickness, sorrow, mental anguish or any other adversity, those who find their hopes are raised only to be dashed, those who feel they carry the world upon their shoulders and are wondering if they can bear up under the strain. Oh Lord God, have mercy upon them those around them who love and support them, the many carers as well. Gracious God, please comfort those who mourn, and we thank you for those who have inspired us by persevering to the end, fighting the good fight of faith. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, we praise you for bringing us safely to the beginning of this day. Defend us with your mighty power, and grant that we fall into no sin, nor run into any kind of danger, but govern and guide us at all times, that we may do what is right in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we were able to sing at church, then we would be uh, taking up a collection in a, a final hymn. But I say now, just to say it on screen at least once, uh, what I'm saying now that we're back at church, uh, back at church now and mask wearing. And that is, thank you. Thank you for the way you make sure your financial gifts get through. That is appreciated and an ongoing encouragement as we go about the master's business at and through St Mark's. Another song which I read as a poem. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. He guides my ways in righteousness, and he anoints my head with oil. And my cup, it overflows with joy. I feast on his pure delights. And though I walk the darkest path, I will not fear the evil one, for you are with me and your rod and staff are the comfort I need to know. And I will trust in you alone. I will trust in you alone. For your endless mercy follows me. Your goodness 
will lead me home. And now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and all whom you love, both near and far, and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you for staying connected with St Mark's.